How do you do, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls and people? I am the professor, Julia Sumner Miller, and physics is my business. And our special business today will absolutely enchant you because it appears so unreasonable. We name it Pascal's Paradox, after Blaise Pascal, about whom you should read. Indeed, at the age of nine, he happened to bang one of his mother's dinner plates and it rang out, and he wrote a paper on sounding singing plates. Age nine. His father used to have the intellects of Paris meet at their home on Friday evenings for discussion of certain problems which were roaming Europe, and young Pascal would sit in at the meetings and throw light on certain matters. And here is Pascal's paradox, P-A-S-C-A-L. Consider now the following very sharply. Let me have three vessels which have identical bottoms or bases. Identical bottoms or bases. As say these two, I could have a third one. This base is identical with this base. Now let me have these containers with walls such. The walls here vertical, the walls here diverging out, the walls here diverging in. And let me call these vessels little a, little b, and little c. Now let me fill these vessels to identical depths with water. Water, 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 everywhere, nor any drop to drink. Now I'm going to ask some questions. Very, very important questions leading up to more and more difficulty. First, I ask, which vessel has the greatest volume of water in it? No question, number B. Quest second question, which vessel has the greatest mass of water in it? Clearly, number B. Third question, which vessel has the greatest weight of water in it? Clearly, number B. Next question. At the bottom of which vessel do we have the greatest pressure? At the bottom of which vessel? And now, do you see, you have to think a little. Ho, oh, ho, it's a strange business. The pressure is the same there as there as there. So the pressures are all equal. Now the last question. On the bottom of which vessel do we have the greatest force? Do you see why it's called Pascal's Paradox? The forces are all the same. And now we are in an absolute dilemma because this bottom holds up this much water and this bottom holds up only that much water and this bottom holds up that much water but there's no water there. And isn't that an absolute enchantment to engage in? And I'm going to show you, the proof would take me another half an hour perhaps, that the pressures and the forces on the bottoms are all the same using this system, this piece of apparatus, which is known as Pascal's vases. There are three of them to be likened to those three, but we need only concern ourselves with the worst cases, which are these two. Now I'll have to make clear that there is water here and water here, but there is no water here and no water here. And do you see why we have a dilemma? The answer is in part, the walls hold up the water which is in these little wedge-shaped places, and here the walls push on the water making up for the water which is not there. So you see again Sherlock Holmes and the dog which did not bark in the night. And I thank you for watching.